Hey everyone, welcome to Hero Tech. This is our tutorial on how to make the Amazing Spider-Man base retractable web shooter. You can see here, here are the 3D printed parts. All the files and links to the materials are in the description. And yeah, so these specific parts we got from a 3D printing website called Treatstock. So we just uploaded our files and they got it shipped to us. And it cost only about 10 bucks and the quality is pretty good. So if you guys don't have a 3D printer, you can go ahead and use that. And this here is the component kit from Amazon. So you can see here, it has the materials you need. The kit is mostly for convenience's sake and all the materials are in one place, except for the 3D printed parts. You can start by uh, preparing the 3D printed parts to be put together. So here is the diamond needle file. And you can use this to basically get rid of all the extra 3D printing artifacts. So areas to look out for is one inside here, you see this hole. This hole is where the webbing is going to be going through. So we want this to be as circular as possible. So you can just get your needle file and smoothen that out. Once that's done, another area to look out for is these slots for the LEDs. These also need to be cleared of any 3D printing debris. Okay, other areas to watch out for are just making sure these holes for our screw inserts are just clear and there hasn't been any support material printed there. So after that, you just wanna inspect all the 3D printed parts, make sure there's just no additional material where it shouldn't be or any debris like dangling out. All right, now all the 3D printed parts are prepared, we can move on to the first part of the assembly. So we will start with the bottom part of the assembly first and let me just get these materials out of the bags. Okay, so here we have the bottom part and we can start assembling it. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our nylon line here, cut it approximately in half. You're gonna thread this through the two halves of the lock block. So one will go straight through here and the other will go straight through the other side. There you go. So you should have this. Then the next thing you're gonna thread it through is the spring. So this spring goes through here, threads all the way through. And you should be left with this. So now that we have this assembly, we can slot it through this hole right here. See there's a hole there and that is just for the nylon line. That goes all the way through, just like that. There you go. So this is gonna serve as the trigger. So the scrimps are these small beads with a screw. So this allows us to fasten our nylon line in one place so that we can actually trigger the web shooter. Loosen it up first, just a little bit, making sure that the screw doesn't fall out because these are kind of a pain to lose. We can adjust the actual tightness and length of it later. Just wanna tighten it enough to secure it in place. And this is our bottom assembly. So next what we can do is finish the top and put the bottom and top together. So first thing we're gonna wanna do here is get our middle piece, this right here, and our spring. So this is our main spring that will actually propel the projectile and let us shoot out the webbing. You can see here, there's a little groove just for us to be able to slot the spring in. So once we have that, we can take this, take our top, and very carefully slot them in together. And now we can put the bottom and the top together. That includes with the LEDs. Here we have our two PCBs. Custom PCB designs. And one of them is the LED, one of them is for the retractable cartridge. For now, we're interested in the LED one. We'll take this and also take out the batteries as well. You can install them all at the same time. This one is the main body battery for the LEDs. There we go, and this is the charger. Do recommend to charge it to full before using it. Pretty simple, you can just slot it in like so and then stick it into your computer and the red light will light up and you'll know it's done charging when the light goes off. Take this here, take this here. Make sure the two metal LEDs are facing up Facing up and then slot it in and you're good to go. You can test if it works by turning it on and there, you can see our LEDs are glowing. Take your middle part and line up the LEDs with the slots and just push them all the way in. Should look like that. 
So after doing this, there's one more step we have to do. We need to take out our screw inserts. So the screw inserts we need are going to be the 2.5D M2 screw inserts and the eight millimeter M2 screws. So these are for the body. They are the longer ones. And we will also need our screw insert tool. What you wanna do with these screw inserts is that you take the tool and then you take screw inserts and you'll see that there is a tiny, a tiny little nub there and that lines up with the tool here. Let's see if you can see it there. That lines up with the tool. So you just slot it in like so and make sure it's aligned. And this will let you install the screw insert into the body. Align it with the hole in the body and then just twist. And you can keep twisting until the screw insert is flush and then just a little bit inside of the body. Now that's installed, now I just repeat the process for the rest of the holes. All right, and once the four screw inserts have been installed, we can go ahead and fully install the bottom. So we take this, this, lock, this bottom, we align the lock block slot, and then we align the battery as well. And we press down, and make sure nothing is pinching. So the two parts should be completely flush, like so. After that, it's a simple matter of just screwing in the four screws. All right. And now we have our top. See here, the full assembly. You can test with the lock block, see if it slides, good. See the switch here, LEDs turn on, great. Now the final step to finish this bottom is super gluing our bingo chip. There's our bingo chip properly installed and there's our finished top assembly. All right, so now that we have our top, let's attach our watch strap to it. So you wanna get one side in first and with the other side sticking out, you use pin, push in, and then push the watch strap in until you hear it click. Once you hear the click, you know the watch strap is secure and in place. And we can just do the same with the other side pretty good and now we can adjust our nylon line to fit our finger and the way we do that is you attach the web shooter via the watch strap then you pull on the line and we want the, the line to end right about here so that when we pull it it triggers the web so marking that spot you can then adjust the scrimp length accordingly once you're at the right length you can fully tighten the scrimp and make sure to tighten it as tight as possible if you need to, you can hold the scrimp down with pliers while you tighten the screw. And this is just to ensure that when you're pulling and triggering the web shooter that it doesn't slip or move. There you go. So this is the finished main body of the web shooter. And now we can move on to the cartridge. So the cartridge comes in two parts. We have a bottom and a top. And they go together like this. And first of all, what we're going to do is attach the webbing onto the motor itself. There's two spools of webbing. One is a pre-cut and pre-prepared roll. So all this one would need to do is tie it onto here. We'll walk through the process of making your own from this kind of spool. Get the webbing. You want approximately four meters of this webbing out. The particular fishing line we're using is the Spiderwire Ultracast Invisibraid six pound test. So the lower pound tests actually help to ensure that the wire spools out correctly and shoots out nicely. So how we do this is that on one end of the wire, we need to tie a knot. So you can tie any kind of knot you want as long as the opening is around this large. Any bigger and it may start to interfere with the web shooter's workings. Any smaller and it wouldn't be able to fit onto the projectile. You can tie a knot right around here on one end of the webbing We'll also put resources in the description if you want to uh, learn how to tie a certain knot or the one that we use. Now the other end of the web will slot in. So there's a hole on the reel and this end of the webbing slots right in through the hole and then you tie it off with a knot.
saw through there, and then tie a quick knot securing the webbing to the reel. And making sure that the triple knot is very tight against the reel. Because if it's not, what happens is that the knot actually stops the webbing from going out as it's pulling off. It adds extra resistance, and we don't want that. There you go, the reel is prepared. What you're gonna wanna do is grab the other battery and again, slot it in just nice. So the metal, the two leads should always be facing up, not down, and slot it in like that. There we go. Here is our finished PCB electronics. For the reload cartridge, you can see there's a nice slot here that we can just insert our PCB into. Position the motor exactly like this. So you want to move it across first, then press it against there, and place it so that the wires loop around in this way. And this just helps with wire management and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. And same with the battery. Battery, you can just kind of press that in there. And this is the basic structure for the internals of the electric reload cartridge. So the final part for this electric reload cartridge is to install the screw inserts. So we're gonna use M2. The size is 2D, so the height is smaller than the ones for the body. And then six millimeters M2 screws. So again, the height is smaller than the ones for the body. Same process as last time, you're going to take your screw insert tool, set it up, and then slot it into this hole here. Yep, so that's about there. And then what we do, just like that. And if we do it correctly, then it should match up pretty nicely. And that's our cartridge. Final step is to screw in the screw that attaches the top and bottom parts. This cartridge is complete, and we can actually start to reel in the webbing. So, explanation of the PCB, it's a DPDT motor switching PCB that is attached to a reel. So, the bottom part controls which direction the motor spins, and the top part just activates it. So go ahead and activate it. As you will see, we want to spool it on nicely so that it doesn't tangle, just like a fishing line. There we go. We have our watch cartridge. So we just take the watch from here. So what we're actually interested in here is the internal LEDs that make up the watch. And we're going to take that and put it into this watch cartridge. The way we're going to do that is by taking off these screws here. So one, two, three, four, we need to take all of these out. So after you take those four screws apart, all I have to do is get inside here and push out. And there we can find our watch internals. I'm doing the same motion here and push it out. This is what we're really interested in. You can also take off this white masking. From here, the installation is really simple. Just take it and slot it in. Final part is the projectile itself. The projectile itself is comprised of two parts, your four by 12 millimeter neodymium magnet and your magnet housing that's printed in nylon. So the way we do this is first you put in one side of it, then using a hard surface like this one, just press the other side of the magnet in. And there you go, it should slot right in because of the flexible properties of the printed nylon. With all of these parts, our web shooter is complete. So first of all, we can showcase the watch function. Pretty simple, the cartridge just slides in and tells the time these little binary sequences of hours, minutes and tens, and minutes and ones. So the way to load your electric reload webbing cartridge is you take the side of the webbing with a loop in it and put that through the barrel. Just nice so it comes out the other side. Then you can open up the loop and what you do then is slot the projectile end through and tighten it. There. So then what you can do is you can hold it like so, turn on the webbing cartridge, turn it off, and then slot in cartridge and then to load in the projectile all you have to do is make sure the magnet is facing down 
pull on the nylon line, slot it in, let go of the nylon line, and your projectile is locked. And here you have your full Amazing Spider-Man base retractable web shooter. If the switch is a little hard for some people to reach, there's another file called switch extension, and this just prints and basically goes right on top of the switch here. And you can add a dab of super glue. And this just makes the switch easier to actuate. Some people may need it, some people may not want it, but it is there. So there's your web shooter. And now we're gonna go over some quick things on how to use it, how to actuate, and how to troubleshoot problems that may come up. So you have your web shooter here to use it, point where you wanna shoot it at, and fire it out. So you can see it shoots out in this nice spiral pattern. After shooting it out, the way to reload it is take out the cartridge, make sure the webbing is at 90 degrees. So make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. If it's not 90 degrees, the webbing will spool out and jam. So we wanna turn it, make sure it's 90 degrees, then turn it on with the top. And then the way the webbing spools on, we want to make sure that it spools equally. We don't want to pull it all in one place. We don't want to pull it all different places because that may jam the webbing again. Once it's pulled all the way in and the projectile is inside the barrel, make sure to turn it off before doing this. Turn off and then slot in the cartridge. After slotting in the cartridge, we can load back in the projectile. Again, making sure the magnet side is facing the bottom. If not, the projectile will not lock. And there you go, rinse and repeat. So the reason we have a DPDT motor switching switch here is because after every couple of shots, you need to switch the direction of the motor. The reason being, after every single shot, more rotations and twist is built into the line. And after enough of those, what happens is that the line will tangle and jam upon itself which is never fun. So some troubleshooting tips. While you're getting used to how to operate this web shooter, it's inevitable that at the start, we will jam or tangle the webbing a couple of times, just like a fishing line. To fix that, what you have to do is spool out the entire line, make sure there's no twist in the line, undo any knots or tangles, and then reinsert it. If the line is too tangled, too far gone, or has too many knots, all you have to do is spool out all the line, cut this off, and replace it with a new line. Luckily, the line is consumable, just like normal fishing line and just like normal fishing reels. After every single shot, it's advised to spool out the webbing completely or pull it out completely. Another tip for when you're loading it is making sure the webbing is distributed evenly and never falls off the edge of it like this. This will cause a lot of line twist, as you can see, and will cause jams and tangles in the future. So always make sure the webbing is being spooled onto the reel and in an even manner. If you have any questions, you can email us at business at herotech.io and we'll try our best to get those answered. Happy web shooting.